What's up you guys? Today we are going to be uploading a little payload to a little web server and executing it on a victim machine and analyzing it in Sysmon. Now I will say there are a lot better tools than Sysmon to analyze processes and malware, especially in a corporate environment. Lots better stuff, but this is just the basics and it does not hurt to learn Sysmon. Seeing what processes are running event viewer things like that let me stop yapping and get into the video so we have my kali linux open and we need to view the ip of this machine so we do if config and this is the ip address so new tab we're going to be using something called e-toolkit which stands for social engineering toolkit oh pseudo se toolkit Cannot forget pseudo. Now, this is the social engineering toolkit. It says the one-stop shop for all your SE needs. The social engineer toolkit is a product of trusted SEC. So you can see here, we have social engineering attacks, penetration testing, fast track, third-party modules, and updates. So we're just gonna click on one. And then we have these different options. We have one, spear phishing attack vectors, website attack vectors, infectious media generator, created payload and listener, mass mailer attack, Arduino-based attack vector, wireless access point attack vector, Lots of cool stuff. But for today, we're going to go with four, create a payload and listener. So we type in four. So for this one, we're going in number two, Windows reverse TCP interpreter. Spawn a interpreter shell on a victim and send back to attacker. So number two, IP address for the payload listener, L host. So we're gonna go here, copy, paste, enter the port. We're gonna go four. That is just the standard, extremely basic port that you can use for these payloads. Now, this payload has been exported to the default set directory located under root.setpayload.exe. Do you want to start the payload and listener now? We're going to go with no. But here's the thing. Real cybersecurity pros don't just memorize payloads. They understand the logic behind them. They understand the system vulnerabilities they exploit and how to maneuver and navigate through complex systems. And that is exactly the kind of problem solving mindset you can build with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, data analysis, programming, and AI, Brilliant is a learning app designed to be uniquely effective. Each lesson is filled with hands on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, a method to be six times more effective than standard lecture videos. Brilliant's first principle approach helps you build an understanding from the ground up. And a perfect mix of engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement keeps you motivated and on track. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of researchers and professionals from Stanford, MIT, Google, Microsoft, and more. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not just memorizing. So while you're building real-world knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do both for your personal and professional growth. Brilliant helps you get smarter in just minutes a day, the complete opposite of mindless scrolling. The Brilliant app makes it easy to learn anywhere right on your phone, with fun, hands-on lessons you can do whenever you have the time. Whether you're diving into a new topic or just doing a quick practice session, you can level up on the go in just minutes. One course that I really resonate with, and I think all of you should also resonate with, is their programming courses. Brilliant's newly updated programming courses are a great way to build foundation in coding, get experience with real-world applications, and learn to think like a programmer. Build timeless problem solving skills to thrive in the evolving world of programming. Learn to think like a programmer by breaking down complex problems into manageable chunks of code. Develop an intuition for computer logic as you learn to design and debug real programs. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. There's a link. There's also a QR code. Also a link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now, back to the video. So, we're opening up a new tab. So here, we are going to set up a little Apache web server. So we are going to run the command service Apache 2 start. And then to check the status, if it is up and running, we do service Apache 2 status. And as you can see there, active in blue, active running. So, we go to good old Firefox, and we go to our IP and Apache 2 Debian default page. 
And this says you should replace this file located at var www.htmlindex.html before continuing to operate your HTTP server. So this is mainly just used for testing. This is run locally. So we don't really need to replace it unless we wanted to change the design, but this is good for what we're doing. So we need to copy the payload.exe into the HTML directory of the Apache web server. So we do CP down here, copy this right here, and we paste that into here. Then we do payload.exe. Oh, sudo again. If you did sudo su, this would make this a lot simpler because you wouldn't have to insert the password every time. But I am silly and don't do sudo su. So that is in there. If we cd into there, do ls, c payload.exe. So let's start up Windows 10. So just to have them side by side here, we are in Windows 10. We go to our browser, type this IP. We see the Apache to Debian default page. So before we do anything further, we have virus and threat protection. Make sure you turn off Defender. And if you're wondering, Maddie, what's the point if you have to turn off Defender? Well, this is a video about analyzing malware in Sysmon and going over a little MSF Venom tutorial. This is not how to bypass AV. So for that reason, make sure your Defender is turned off. So we go here, flash payload. Dot exe enter make sure you trust payload.exe before oh, wait as you can see here it says payload.exe isn't commonly downloaded make sure you trust payload.exe before you open it but before we open it we have to uh start the listener in kali so we go to kali we're back on this tab and it is starting the metasploit framework console if you don't know what that is i have a ton of videos going over it so just go through them and start a reverse tcp handler on the ip so the handler session is started. So we're going to go back to downloads, go here, keep, and now it is downloading. So we're going to go slash payload.exe, enter. Payload.exe is a commonly downloaded. Make sure you trust payload.exe before you open it. Settings, keep anyway. And then we have payload.exe downloaded. So we go to our file. We have right here payload. So I click on it, I execute it, and then Watch in the bottom here on Kali what happens. For info, run anyway. So, payload, not running. As you can see in the bottom, active sessions, no active session. I double click it, nothing happens. I go to Windows Security, real time protection is off, which should let it run. Properties, payload security, I should be able to run it. Full control, original file name ab.exe. That's also going to come in when we analyze it in Sysmon. That's the file name uh, Metasploit gives to it. So this is the OG file name. So you will see that when we run it in Sysmon. But it's not running. Maybe let's try downloading it again. Keep anyway. Open file. More info. Run anyway. Nothing. We're back on Kali. We're going jobs. I meant jobs. And it is running. I'm trying Telnet. Let's see. Not open connection to the host port for connection failed. The joys of tech and troubleshooting. New tab open. It's been a day. Anyway, disabling my firewall. Now let's see if it works. Let's try connecting to it again via telnet. Oh, it seems to be working. Stop. Don't have your firewall active on your Linux machine if you want to do this. Lesson learned. Can we do that again? Okay. Can we open it? Yes. Success. Interpreter session one opened. Let's go. So here we do sessions. Minus I one. Oh, wait. I guess I should see which one it is first. Sessions dash L. Okay. Seems as we have to open because it ran twice. So let's just open the third. Awesome. Now we have a shell. So we type in shell. And as you can see at the bottom, we have users, your mom downloads. And we click LS. Oh, I'm in Linux mode. Sorry. We do dir. And as you can see, we have all my downloads in my Windows VM. So we go to my Windows. Let's do Event Viewer. And here, what have you all been waiting for? Sysmon. So we're going to scroll down. We're in Windows folder right now. And we're S. And how did I forget 
that you have to install sysmon jesus christ guys this video anyway this is the command to install it jesus christ copy command line paste hello what's going on what am i doing wrong sysmon is not recognized as an internal or external command is there a zip file oh god why did i just overlook that holy shit hey jesus christ hey task manager run please sysmon let's see if it's an event viewer i swear to god i guess i should reopen it event viewer please For the love of god microsoft windows sysmon hello what the hell guys sysmon on the please oh my god yes come on guys it's not running the system's not running oh my god what the fuck do you mean anyway i'm getting pissed off anyway this is what it is supposed to look like in sysmon i get this from what's his name john strand this is what it's supposed to look like in sysmon as you can see here ab.exe that is just the name change of the OG file. Meterpreter just changes the name and SA Toolkit just changes the name. So nothing really too special. I just wanted to follow the walkthrough all the way through, but alas, it did not work. Well, everything worked. I got a shell. It's just Sysmon. Anyways, if you want to check that out, it's on John Strand's GitHub. I tweaked it where I used the social engineering toolkit instead of what he did. But you can do it either way you want and i also started an apache web server and he didn't so just pick and choose what works well for you and maybe you'll get sysmon going i totally forgot that my windows vm didn't have it anyway i'm tired i'm sick as you can probably hear by my voice i've been troubleshooting for about 30 minutes to an hour. So if you're not in cybersecurity or information security or tech or IT or whatever, this is what you have to deal with. So just get ready. It's super fun. At the very least, you can run a shell created through a payload by SE Toolkit or MSF Venom, whatever one you want to use. Anyways, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. And I will see you in the next video.